English. It's important that they are not just thinking it in their hearts and minds, that they are actually having this dialogue with their teacher, with their fellow students, so that they can actually see, you know, and get a bigger picture view of that opinion of themselves. Here's another question in my needs analysis worksheet. Again, it's available and it will be available on One Stop English. Um, which of these have you been doing during the lockdown to improve your English? And you might say, mm, I haven't done any of them, I haven't had time. Useful to find out what people are doing. And of course, subtly, students are looking at this list and being reminded of the ways that they can take hold and take control of their learning and do these things at home. You might not have do, done these things during the last 200 days, but hey, it's not too late. Here are some other questions that I have on the needs analysis. What are five things about your English that you feel good about? What are you confident about? And then, what are five things that you wish you could do better? I want specifics. Don't just say, oh, I wish I could speak English better. I want specifics here. Now, many of you mentioned the CEF um, Common European Framework. This is the tool that, um, if you look at the link below, this is the self-assessment grid. This is only a part of the grid. Okay, I couldn't, I couldn't fit it all into the slide. But if you go to that link, you actually can get this grid in different languages. So if you're teaching lower level students, you might want to give them this grid in their own language, in their own first language, so that they can then identify where they feel their listening is at, where they feel their reading is at, etc. Great teachers are habitual students of their students. They assess continually to understand academic progress, which is true, but also to understand the human beings that they teach. We conduct a need and needs analysis, not just for students to reflect on themselves, not just for us to, you know, decide whether they know the present perfect or not. We do it because we want to understand our students better. We want to know how we can personalize and tailor those lessons to fit the individuals in our class. We do it to see if there's a pattern of behavior in the class that perhaps we can address. If everyone hasn't been reading during the lockdown, but a lot of people have been watching Netflix during the lockdown, that shows you a kind of a pattern. Perhaps that calls for more reading practice. Perhaps that tells you that Netflix could be used for homework. Being observant and sensitive to the things that come up during self-assessment can really help you as a teacher plan your course. Of course, we have to also assess continuously. You don't just do it at the start of a course and then forget about it. We assess continuously in a formative way. So it doesn't have to be formal. We can just check students' progress, check their engagement levels in order to improve performance, achieve learning outcomes, and as I said, to look for patterns so that we can adjust our course content. We might have planned the course at the beginning of the season, the term, and we might need to adjust it as we go along. Are students learning? Are they progressing like we think they should be? And we can do this using learner-generated quizzes. Like Will said earlier, we're having a webinar about using Kahoot. Um, there are lots of online quizzes that are fun, colorful, that can be used. Get the learners to generate their own quizzes. Get them to make a quiz. Group A makes a quiz for Group B. Get students to create mind maps and concept maps of what they've already learned, like this one. Put it in the vocabulary notebook. Like this one for grammar. Do regular listening and reading checks. I, for example, love using um, material online for listening and reading checks. For example, I might show them this news item. Okay, I get students, I give students a very short amount of time. I give them 30 seconds to skim read the, the end of the news article. Or perhaps for listening, I might play them the two minute view of the headline from BBC News. Or I might get them to go on Twitter, give them a trending topic and get them to see the opinions. What are recent opinions 
on the quarantine meals that uh, the University of New York are giving their students. What's happening there? What's the news here? Why is it trending? What are people saying? You have 30 seconds or one minute to skim through all the tweets and tell me what you think is happening. So what you're essentially doing is you're getting them to practice just reading, just listening. And through that, you are assessing how good they are at doing these things. Of course, we all know the classic PPP lesson, pr practice, sorry, present, practice and produce. That final P, that production, that task that you give them, that fluency practice that you give them at the end of that lesson, that can be used for continuous assessment. Because as you walk around the room, you are getting a, a sense of what students are learning, what they're not learning, what they can do and what they can't do. And of course, recycling activities like back to board, grammar auction, charades, all these wonderful warmers and fillers that we use all the time in the classroom, they are all great tools for continuous assessment. So always have that notebook at hand, teachers, have that notebook and make sure you're always taking notes because every fluency speaking activity, every game, every quiz is a chance to diagnose where your students are right now. And in the meantime, no one has to know you are assessing progress. You don't have to say, hey, look at me, I'm taking notes. I'm listening to how you're using the present perfect. There is no need to say that at all. Let your students have fun. And in the meantime, you're keeping your ears wide open. Exit slips are a great way to get students to write down at the end of the day what they've learned. What are your three takeaways for today? What are three things you've learned? Two things you're curious about? And one thing that you don't understand. I really like this one. Three things you've learned. Two things you're curious about. And one thing that you don't understand. Three, two, one. What did you find interesting about today's work? So give them a slip of paper and get them to write this down or they can write it in their journals and they can put it even anonymous, anonymously, if you like, into a little box and you can read their feedback at the end of the day. Keeping learner journals and teacher journals are a fantastic way of understanding what they've learned. Okay, what, what they learned today and how they feel about what they've learned. Learner journals can be colorful, can, it can be visual, it doesn't have to be boring. Give them five minutes at the end of every lesson to fill in their journal, to write in their journal about how they feel about what they've learned today. Now remember, I'm always saying how they feel because it's really important to consider their emotions and how they're engaging with the lesson and not just the content of what they've learned. I love this quote. The teacher's job is to engineer effective learning environments for students, to ensure that learning is proceeding, is going in the intended direction. And the only way we can do this is through assessment. And this is why assessment is the bridge between teaching and learning. We assess to better understand our students. We get them to self-assess to better understand themselves. And with better understanding, hopefully, comes motivation, engagement, and progress. Thanks very much for listening to me today. Um, I'm Chia Swan Chong, and it's been wonderful talking to all of you and interacting with all of you in the chat field. Um, if you have any questions, please do feel free to ask in the chat field. Um, if you enjoyed the webinar, Come back again. We're doing another session later today, uh, 6 p.m. UK time. Uh, tell your friends friends, tell your colleagues, tell your, 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 your um, fellow teacher trainees, and I'll see you then, perhaps. Much. Thank you, Will. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Oh, no problem. No problem. I think you're getting lots of love over here. Lots of love. Lots of thank yous. Um, I'm just going to take this moment before I go on. Guys, if you've got any questions for Chia about anything she's spoken about,